Anderson Silva wasn't an instant success as a draw. In the early stages of what's still the longest championship reign in UFC history, Silva's middleweight title fights were often paired up as double bills with other big attractions on UFC pay-per-view card. The idea of Silva as a legendary figure didn't really take hold until his Houdini submission of Kale Sonnen and face kick knockout of Vitor Belfort. Demetrius Johnson has surpassed Silva's record for most successful title defenses, with 11 in his five years as UFC flyweight champion. The world's best current pound-for-pound fighter is just now starting to get his due after all these years. This brings us to Max Holloway, the UFC featherweight champion, and to last night's UFC 218 card in Detroit. Holloway, who turns 26 this month solidified his hold on the championship on Saturday night by once again defeating the man from whom he won the belt in June, Jose Aldo, by the same method he used back then by patiently waiting him out for two rounds, then turning up the heat and finishing him in the third. Holloway, who's been in the UFC since age 20, has now won 12 consecutive fights. That's enough to get him on the short list of longest win stakes in UFC history. Silva's 16-fight UFC win streak sits alone atop history. Holloway is now in fifth, but he's won off a three-way tie for second shared by Johnson, Georges St-Pierre, and John Jones. The energetic Hawaiian doesn't quite have the look-at-me charisma of Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, or Brock Lesnar, the type that puts the competitors on the rocket ship to stardom. Nor does he seem to attract the type of haters who will pay money in hopes of seeing a fighter get his or her ass kicked. Rather, Holloway seems destined to be the sort of elite fighter who builds his legacy brick by brick. He's in the process of distinguishing himself as someone who is going to give you bang for your buck every time he steps into the cage. Sometimes, that might even mean nights like last night, in which Holloway fought last after an evening of spectacular performances that left the crowd a little burned out, solid performances that are better appreciated down the road than they were on the night they went down. Turns out the champ himself seems cognizant of this, and is ready to play the long game, ready to stand out in a time in which so many champs seem focused on everything except the next challenger on front of them. I understand, I can see it from two ways, people trying to get that money and leave the game early and people trying to set history or whatever. Right now I'm focused on champ life. Halloway said, I want to be a champion, I want to be a long-reigning featherweight champion, I want to be known in the history books, my name everywhere is a champion. And then later on in my career when I start getting good, then I can start doing the exhibition matches for money and stuff. So far, so good. UFC 218 quotes, I want to be like DJ. As soon as they come up, they pop up, you guys get sent right back down to the bottom of the barrel, brother. So good try and keep trying to catch up, more Halloway. The way he fought tonight, the way he walked him down, tried to break him mentally and physically was incredible. He looked like a stud tonight and was willing to put himself in harm's way. UFC President Dana White on Holloway, once we keep this guy active and you see him doing this to all the big stars that you know and yeah, I think this guy's going to be a rock star globally. White on Francis Ngannou stock report up Francis Ngannou. It's rare we've seen a new pond coming fighter step to the plate and hit a home run in their big chance to prove themselves legit quite like the performance Ngannou put on Saturday night. You only have to go back a few months, after all, to recall Yair Rodriguez falling flat in a similar spot against Frankie Edgar. Ngannou's brutal left hook which knocked over Reem's stiff throne with such precision and efficiency, announced to the world the UFC just might finally have that elusive, one-punch heavyweight superstar they've long sought. If that's how Ngannou carried himself in such a high-pressure moment, then the sky's the limit for the fighter who wants to be the UFC's first African champ. Down Jose Aldo you could see flashes of the old Jose Aldo last night. Those wicked leg kicks were back. He popped Halloway often enough to keep him honest. But then Halloway turned up the heat and the end came fast. That's three losses via finish in the once invincible Aldo's last four fights. Given that he's lost twice to Holloway, so no one wants to see them fight again, and he's beaten Frankie Edgar twice, so no one wants to see them fight again and also given the brutal weight cut Aldo went through Friday Aldo's going to have to decide whether he wants to continue in this sport, and if so, a move up to 155 would be highly advised. A petty Alvarez. It's not just that Alvarez went out and earned his self-given title of the sport's most violent fighter, it's the intelligence he showed in going out and doing so. This wasn't the reckless brawler of the famed Michael Chandler fights. 
This was a fighter who used brutal body shots to stymie a forward-moving monster who went to the head when the body shots opened things up who kept improvising ways to somehow keep Gavi's brutal leg kicks from ending the fight. Alvarez, as my colleague Luke Thomas points out, now has wins over former UFC, Strike Force, WEC, Bellator, and WSOF champions. If he keeps this up, we may have to go ahead and create a most violent fighter belt for him. Hold Justin Gaethje. When Gaethje was first gaining notice in WSOF, I had just assumed he was going to be a wild brawler who would only last as long as his chin held out. Well, the man still likes to brawl, but he's proven a much better fighter than he appeared at first glance. Consider that in back-to-back -back fights, we've seen fighters the caliber of Alvarez and Michael Johnson get pushed way out of their comfort zones, then have to rely on every trick in their book to try to put Gaethje away. Johnson ultimately got finished. Alvarez got the finish. Don't give up on Gaethje just yet. Maybe he'll just go down the path of brawling for dollars, but this is also a guy who may be an adjustment or two away from real greatness. Up Yancey Medeiros and Alex Oliveira. This looked on paper like a solid little scrap to help whet the fans' appetite on FS1 before the PPV. Instead, it turned into the most memorable cable eaten fight since the Chan Sung Jung Leonard Garcia throwdown at the legendary WEC 48. Medeiros and Oliveira engaged in a dramatic series of twists and turns, with both fighters pushing through scenarios that would have ended most fight as nights, before Medeiros finally put Oliveira down in the third. It was the sort of fight that takes years off fight as live, but it was one that also marks both of these competitors' next fights as must. Interesting stuff there's no doubt Herb Dean's stoppage of the Abdul Razak al Hassan's Abahomasi fight wasn't his finest moment. From his vantage point, with al Hassan partially blocking his view, it appeared al Hassan dropped Homasi, when it turned out Homasi was simply changing levels and going for a single. But I can't help but look at it this way if a referee is going to make a mistake and being human, they will I'd rather see a referee break up what he incorrectly perceived as a fighter in trouble than see a referee wait too long and let a fighter absorb an unnecessary beating. And they're going to run back this fight at UFC 219, so in the end, no harm, no foul. Beyond that, aside from a debatable score and Felice Herrig's split decision win over Courtney Casey, that could have gone either way. There wasn't much to criticize. Let's hope it stays that way for a while. Fight I'd like to see next Stipe Myasic vs. Francis Ngannou I wouldn't go so far as to say that Myasic vs. Ngannou will be as big a fight as Lesnar's bouts during his peak, because Lesnar had a star power no UFC heavyweight before or since has matched. But Myasic Ngannou would unquestionably be the biggest heavyweight title fight since the first Cain Velasquez vs. Junior Dos Santos bout. Myasic has knocked out his last five opponents and would be going after that elusive third heavyweight title defense. Ngannou, well, you saw what happened last night. The sooner they can make this fight, the better. Bonus fight Let's rebook that Holloway Edgar bout at the first available opportunity. Holloway is one of the brightest talents in the game. But they're still in the process of turning him into a star. In the absence of a McGregor fight that's not likely to happen, another victory over a former champion would be the best way to continue building Holloway's following and make him a money player. Give my professional Facebook page a like when you get a minute. Thanks.